Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here in downtown Honolulu, Hawaii on a early Tuesday evening. Uh, this show here being a critical format, um, we want to talk about architecture primarily. And uh, our founding father of the show, Jay Fidel, and I keep constantly talking about the state of architecture on the island and we agreed that it could be described with a word that starts with S and I'll leave it to him to ever mention that or not that exists in both our languages of our cultures and if Zuri can help us out with the first slide please that has um, uh, an informed citizens uh, comment about that subject matter and, and this is how one of our guests uh, of the recent shows is our dear um, activist journalist, Kurt Sandburn. And um, we're sitting together and brainstorming along the lines of that paraphrasing. And this is actually one of the uh, viewers of his Civil Beat article that he wrote um, and, and so along these lines. But we quickly went to let's be constructive and let's find something that is actually good architecture on the islands here. And, as uh, you guys can read in the article, uh, our suggestion or proposal was uh, that the best new piece of architecture is the new Rainbow Drive in Canopy. So our today's guest is the client and owner of that project. So it's uh, Jim uh, Kuzukuma. Yes. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much for being here. Well, thanks for having us. And explain a little bit um, about yourself, obviously, and, and the project. And what we will see in the background here is actually the condition that, uh, that inspired you or informed you to actually make a change to your situation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thanks very much. And it was a big surprise first when um, Kurt approached me and wanted to do an article on the canopy. I, it was just the canopy and, you know, a utilitarian piece for us and something that we wanted to do, um, of course, to help the environment and, and save um, electricity. Um, and then it was a bigger surprise when you asked me to come on Think Tech, uh, uh, Think Tech Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, uh, to talk about the canopy and, and, and also that you're an architect and appreciated the structural and the visual um, uh, elements of, of that building. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you very much for having us and, and uh, I like to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm uh, the Senior Vice President of Operations for Rainbow Drive-In. Um, it's a family business. My father-in-law actually started the business um, in 1961. Uh, we've only been at that location um, we have, we don't own the property. We mm -hmm. lease it from uh, an old Kapahulu family that, that still owns the, owns, owns the property. And if you know anything about these, these uh, traditional families, uh, first they, you know, we've always, my father-in-law always tried to, to, to purchase the property, but they were like, oh, well, you know, as long as mom's alive, we can't sell the property. Mm -hmm. And then it was as long as the kids are alive and now it's the grandkids. And Lord, rightly so, you know, it's, it's, they, they want to pass it on as a legacy in their family. Mm -hmm. But they've been so great to us in that they've always um, uh, agreed to, to extend the leases. And mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> about five or six years ago, I um, thought that, you know, we should also plan our family's legacy in the business and ask them about getting a 20 or 25 year lease on the property. Uh, previously we had five to 10 years mm -hmm. and they were gracious enough to accept it. And so at that point, you know, we could really invest in some infrastructure into mm -hmm. the building and mm -hmm. whatnot. And uh, so at that point, solar, solar panels and, and looking into some sort of long-term solution mm -hmm. to this stuff really mm -hmm. became uh, mm -hmm. possible and feasible. Zuri, could you bring the next picture, which actually shows just for a little glimpse that family tradition, uh, how long it's been around. This is a sort of a historic picture here. It actually shows the building as it actually still exists. Yeah, that was um, probably taken um, uh, on opening day or very close to it. Mm -hmm. um, they not 
quite sure. But you can see by the flags and the and the and the and the the, the, the flowers. If you can see the flowers in the window, so it's got to be pretty close to opening day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that that originally building where the windows are and that cement f uh, uh, around mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. is still there. Mm -hmm. um, it looks a little bit different. We covered it with tile and extended the dining room out to the side mm -hmm. and did some cosmetic things mm -hmm. to it. But that's basically mm -hmm. the building. The kitchen inside is the same size mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and everything, yeah. And if we could get <coughs> the next picture, please. And I would say, I mean, you're always, I like because you're downplaying things sort of in your humble way, Jim, I have to say, because the first editions was already, as the background we see all the time, was basically uh, adding lanai's. I would say you also changed or optimized the performance <laughs> of the building, right? <coughs> Yeah. Because the previous picture had no shade in front of where you get the Obviously, food. for customers' comfort, we, mm -hmm. you know, eventually, and as the business advanced and became successful or a little bit more successful, mm -hmm. we added lanai's and, and shading and extended the building out, mm -hmm. of course, to protect the customers from rain. And the most recent step of that is what we see now here in that picture. Here, right. right. And that's, you know, the canopy that that overhead houses the solar panels mm -hmm. and underneath provides uh, some shaded parking for cars. We didn't mm -hmm. lose any parking, mm -hmm. fortunately, and, um, and also on the other side uh, gave us tables uh, for additional seating mm -hmm. and to keep people out of the sun, mm -hmm. uh, gave, some, mm -hmm. gave some shade. And the, the previous show I would have loved to witness, but I read about it, so I will listen to it later on because they're all on YouTube, was about is a car-free Hawaii possible, and I'm very excited about that. Might be a little contradiction with you as being rainbow drive-in, however, <laughs> that first picture showed mainly bicycles there. Yeah. So there is sort of a multimodal aspect of your I, project, You right? know, I don't have a problem with a carless Hawaii. You just get that I, rail I, built and, yeah. <laughs> and tag it on. I, sorry, I didn't mean to be political. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, um, uh, yeah, no, we, we definitely have a car problem. And I guess, you know, we'd have to change the name to, mm -hmm. I don't know, Rainbow Walk-In or something. Mm -hmm. But that's okay with me. <laughs> that's very creative. <laughs> so I actually subtitled these pictures. The first one I said is obviously bicycle friendly, you know. Mm -hmm. The next one, it, it is still car friendly. There was this picture with, I love that, with the old VW Bug, which I see a lot of these old German cars being frequent <laughs> customers of yours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also these, uh, these, uh, these uh, buggies. I see a lot of these buggies and in the most crazy way, right? From time to time, yeah. See, so there's, there's that. And then uh, the other pictures actually show it all encompassing. It also shows actually um, uh, fauna, it shows birds. And I know it's sort of <laughs> like the birds are kind of a love-hate relationship, yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. But, but you don't <coughs> kick them out, you kind of live with them. There's kind of a coexistence to it, at least my feel was. And yeah. then I see plants. You actually put plants down there. So you got the whole ecosystem pretty much covered in, in that. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know if we purposely did all of that, but you know, I mean, I'm glad you see it that way. <laughs> but you know, it, you know, plants definitely add, add a, a better feeling. And you know, we thought it, it, it would definitely cool the place down, mm -hmm. and, you know, rather than just have a bare mm -hmm. parking lot mm -hmm. and bare columns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, to, to try to add a little And then, then we're planet friendly because you actually, you know, the roof top, the roof cover, the, the rain membrane, talk more specifically what that is. The, the solar panels mm -hmm. themselves, yeah, so, you know, we, and in, in thinking about it, when we started to think about actually doing this and getting the cost together and then the design of it all, um, yeah, then we decided to, to definitely put it on top of the canopy because as far as solar panels go, the roof of the actual drive in itself mm -hmm. didn't have nearly enough space to make it worthwhile to, mm -hmm. to put panels up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and make it pay off. So the only alternative was to, to build a canopy to put enough panels up there to make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, then we thought, hey, you know, we just go ahead and and use the panels as a roof covering yeah. and uh, of course uh, build a structure up high enough so that cars and some, some, some sort of trucks and things would fit under it mm -hmm. without hitting the panels mm -hmm. or the, mm -hmm. the structure. Yeah. And then decided to move it out, cantilever it and um, put seating on the other side. So it yeah. all kind of came together yeah, yeah, yeah. as a... As a organic thought thing to satisfy satisfy both sides yeah 
It sounds to me like a very informed client. I wish I would, and I had <laughs> clients like that, but I love them because you <coughs> need to have an informed client. I said in the last show, unfortunately, we, a lot of architecture happens without architects, which sort of yeah. a little bit selfishly, I'm kind of torn about that, but it can never happen without clients. So the client, we need to inform and educate clients, and you're an informed and self-educated client. And I just want to point out, this is really provocative, and I know I put myself on a hot spot and a hot seat here. So we call uh, Kurt Sandburn the most activist uh, you know, journalist on the island. Yeah. And, and an architect here, an educator, we call the best piece of architecture in Honolulu. There was no architect involved. There was an informed <laughs> client involved, but you then had a contractor. <coughs> Yeah. You had a PV consultant, right. and that's basically it, right? Yeah, we. I guess you know the PV um, company, which is Kamaina Solar. Can I say that? I don't know. Of course. Uh, um, we work very closely with them, and I was fortunate enough to have a, a very good representative that worked from their company that worked with us, and they actually obtained the engineering company. But um, I was, and they came up with several proposals, and uh, we sat down and talked and sketched out uh, mm -hmm. different. Uh, alternatives and things mm -hmm. and and I think uh, all in all between what we needed and what they proposed and then also what was engineering possible you know mm -hmm. I think we have the best uh, looking building and uh, the best structure and the best mm -hmm. uh, practical things to, to yeah and with that I allow myself to be the academic in me you know who is reflecting on things almost like a theorist sure. right? which is not my main field but I'm <coughs> allow myself to reflect on things it's like and this was interesting when Kurt and you already said that a little bit when he approached you you're kind of puzzled and a little a perplexed very. right because you say well I don't know he actually asked you he confronted you and say is this a local building yeah. and I love your reaction was like well actually no but maybe thinking about it <laughs> and you admit it you know it might but intuitively and right yes exactly I mean we never designed it to be local or to be architecturally pleasing or anything mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and and I still am in awe that you recognize the building and and consider it you know but you saw so eloquently and elaboratively talk about what actually a building should do in hawaii right which is your home you say yeah. it's some basic protection from the elements being the exactly. sun and the rain here exactly. but it wants to and you're a big fan of the breeze the easy breezy i i really am right um i'm i'm uh concerned about yeah, the, the movement of the wind and, and how buildings um, are, are changing that basic mm -hmm. uh, flow of, of energy or that, that natural flow from the mountains to the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so definitely we wanted to build something that allowed that also. So, so as a theory proposition, rather than doing something that's invasive and then decorating it local, right? You're actually doing something that's exotic because steel, to be honest, if I have to explain to the students, I say mainly per default, steel is not good because it basically right. rusts on the island. Right. But in your case, you know, achieving what you wanted to do, it was the best choice. And if you take good care of it, just like with a car and repaint it every once in a while, mm -hmm. every so and often, it can actually last pretty long. So it's a very logic decision, right? If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still, I'm still really in awe, really, Martin, about, okay. about, about, you know, your, 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 your. Um, so you know, being being so impressed with our so building. I got to try harder, and I will do that after the little <laughs> break we take. Okay. So we're going to be back in a minute. Bear with us. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. We highlight success stories in Hawaii of both businesses and individuals. We learn their secrets to success, which is always valuable. I hope to see you on our next show. Aloha. 
Welcome back. We're back to the show, which I forgot to say, which I called uh, Roofy Texture Rainbow Drive <laughs> with uh, Jim Kuzukuma. So we started off that I need to try harder to convince you about that you really did the greatest piece of architecture <laughs> here on the island. I'm honored, really. So I'm shocked. <laughs> just like, um, you know, my proposition is the indigenous, right? Here, actually everywhere, not just here, mm -hmm. everywhere. Even mm -hmm. in northern Germany, where I'm from, we don't mm -hmm. have that much wood, so we just had a, we put a tree every three feed as a stud, right. you know, we call this half-timbered. It's just the vernacular that arises out of the local resources mm -hmm. and then the means and methods did develop naturally out of that. So your thing was like, I have a limited budget. I yeah. need to provide shade for all these different species. I mm -hmm. wanna basically generate um, as much as possible my own um, electricity. Mm -hmm. That way help myself, but also help the environment because you yes. believe in them, that's the future. And for that, you just needed the right solution, nothing more and nothing less. Yeah. And I allow myself to say, this is the way people everywhere in the world and also here mm -hmm. have done that. And way back they came up with, okay, we got some trunks and we got to do some latching to keep it together. Mm -hmm. And the best way to put it together is this way, because then, you know, uh, gravity plays out. So that's the way. And yours obviously looks different because it's not nostalgically trying to sort of remember that right. in, a, in a kitschy uh, sort mm -hmm. of a, a skewed postmodern way, but just mm -hmm. continue that kind of rationality. And what comes out of it, this poetry, is a direct result of this sort of pragmatism. As we look at the hollies, the thatch hollies, so mm -hmm. not nostalgically and say they're so cute, they're so lovely. Mm -hmm. Well, they weren't way back. They were just the best they could do at that point, and so you did. And what I love about your project, if we can go to the two last slides really quickly here, is that you actually then came up with touching the, the ground lightly, and maybe um, uh, the, actually the, the last picture here, um, uh, there, are only th there are only three posts where actually right. the structure, and that needs to be because otherwise, you know, you can dry there, you can sit there, all these things. But this is my favorite detail here, <laughs> and I never actually asked you about it, and I do it right now. Okay. I find this so extremely poetic, and I refer to the previous picture, which is the case study houses in California in the uh -huh. 50s. They were uh, done by these young architects, emerging wow. architects. They didn't want to build in a in a classicist way anymore. They just want to be modern and stripped down and naked, bare to the bones. Mm -hmm. and, and this house here is the case study house number 22 by Pierre Koenig and actually the guy who did the Matrix movies, uh, Joel Silver, mm. bought that house. Mm. And we talked in the last, one of the last shows, Bob Lillestrand, that his house, you know, has been yeah, yeah. Uh, communicated and celebrated by Hawaii Five O people and stuff like that. So. We, we need to make things cool. And I think, you know, maybe not, you admit already that not intellectually and not obviously and not reflectively, yeah. but intuitively, there was that thing. So what I'm going to ask you is why do these beams cantilever out more than the, than the PV panels, which make them look really light as opposed to heavy? And there's the other thing <coughs> you actually talked about why the main truss is basically taper, as we mm -hmm. call it. So they're actually thicker at at where the, the column is, yeah. and then they get thinner to yeah. the end. Why is that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the engineers designed it. No, uh, the, the, the reason why the ends are hanging, I mm -hmm. mean, I know uh, architecturally and design-wise and all that, but it's really more just of a practical thing is that mm -hmm. the panels didn't make it out to the end. Mm -hmm. And um, and we had all they had we had already designed the the, the, the cantilevers out. Um, and so we that, that's just the way that's just the way it happened. The, as far as the, the, the cantilevers themselves and the and the angle uh, on the front and the back side, um, you know, they could have easily made it straight across. But mm -hmm. practically speaking, um, uh, by by angling it out, it gave us a few more inches or feet, right, mm -hmm. of clearance on the front side, so mm -hmm. that if uh, a tall truck or something by some chance backed into there, um, that they would gradually make contact rather than just tear the whole uh, mm -hmm. end of the mm -hmm. uh, end of the uh, of the beam out. Mm -hmm. So there was a practical um, mm -hmm. reason for that, mm -hmm. and um, and that's. That's, yeah, that's basically what happened. And once they designed it and I saw it, I, I, of course, I thought it was 
it was just, it was really nice. I think it adds a lot and gives it, like you would say, a gracefulness maybe to the building um, rather than just have a solid beam out there. But it, it originated with a, with a practical uh, solution to giving us additional inches of clearance. And there we go again. That's what we're talking <coughs> about. That's illustrating. Yep. You are that informed client I keep telling you about. And you know that. You're not arguing that. You're just arguing the part that sort of, the sort of cultural reflectedness about yeah, it, which you, is good. I mean, know, that's the compliment. Yeah, because I I've, can't really say that we, I, that we, you know, all, all of this was specifically planned and detailed out. As which, which is even better, <coughs> because otherwise it wouldn't be true. It wouldn't be authentic, right? A lot of it. Because the early builders, you know, when they would do the canoe hollies, you yeah, know, yeah. the trunks themselves, yeah. they're thicker at the bottom and they're thinner at the top, and that's the way they put them in, because the loads get actually heavier towards ah. the center of the construction. So actually, the engineers, they were just following the load lines, mm -hmm. right? And right. that is just like... That's what it, why a tree is so uh, organic and so appealing, because it does the same thing, right? Yeah. So there's no superficiality in there. There's no dropped ceiling. There was this funny anecdote that ah. you said, you know, using, and this is pretty provocative, because usually we have to tell the viewers, usually you make a roof, you make a roof membrane, and right. then you stick the PV panels on top of it, and then actually the engineers tell it to angle them in 45 degrees right. towards the sun so you get the most efficiency. Right. You didn't do that. We didn't Why? do that. Why didn't you do that? Well, we didn't do that because it wouldn't have provided the, the covering and the protection from the rain and the elements that, mm -hmm. that we wanted. And... Um, because the canopy was already on the, s on the southwestern side of the building, mm -hmm. um, we didn't think that we would gain enough uh, sunlight to make it worthwhile to change that design. So again, you know, it was just a practical mm -hmm. design element, a practical solution um, uh, <clears throat> that we needed to do in, yeah. order, in order to achieve the total thing that we wanted to do, yeah, which was, which was to provide shelter plus yeah. solar power. We call that comprehensive design that's inclusive <laughs> of everything, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, you got, you, 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 <laughs> you know, the, the fancy elements and the, and the academic elements, but, yeah. but seriously, it was, it was, it was, and, you know, since talking to you and Kurt, I've, I've actually come to appreciate the building <laughs> a lot more and see a lot, a lot more in it. And, so, and I'm even happier with it now so, than I so was before. So slowly but surely you accept the, <laughs> the award, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. And I appreciate actually had you taken the students there and you talked to the students and they were actually mostly uh, impressed by actually your motivation and your your mm -hmm. ethical principle and mm -hmm. they actually feedback back to me and said you know there's this sort of which in corporate America you call this a corporate identity and you're mm -hmm. obviously not you're the opposite of that but it's where where the design ethics are in coherence and consistent with actually the the business model and your business model when I go back to that is actually sort of feed the people yeah you know it's uh, you you take good ingredients you know and, and make a good meal that's affordable, yeah. so there's no fuzzing around, there's no icing on the cake, there's not Waikiki, and there we go with the analogy where you basically fake something as being Hawaiiana and you put yeah. a pineapple on top of that yeah. and some kind of straw and make it look tiki, right? Yeah. You're not doing that, you're saying we have a serious issue here that we have certain parts of the society that they're cut out, so I gotta provide decent food and you it's know, the same with your building true. your building is doing the same it's right? something uh, you know that that I guess has become part of our business culture because mm -hmm. we're constantly looking and and you know de deciding whether to modernize quote you know do the new cuisine or how much of it to put in versus sticking to the traditional food um, but you know every time we look at it um, we're just kind of determined to just keep the food simple and um, feed feed people for the for the most economical prices mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and yet you know use honest food that we can and and that's kind of like where we're at so it translates over into my thoughts about <clears throat> um, energy and doing the solar panels um, we we as a business obviously can't or not obviously but we don't do everything we could. I mean, mm -hmm. we still use plastic. We mm -hmm. still use things that we could um, turn into more disposable items, but 
as far, but then it would raise the cost up. Mm -hmm. But we can do solar panels. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do we can um, do other things that uh, we recycle our oil. We we do things that we can within our business model mm -hmm. to do that. And I mean. I look at it like if every bit, if every business did that and did what they could and really put themselves out there that you know we we that we overall would would have a really pretty good pretty good pretty good place to live and it's something we share you know we talked before <laughs> I call this people and planet friendliness so the planet friendliness yeah. is your PV roof is your by the way I hope you don't mind saying that we talked about the cars so the i3 is yours yeah right in that case and you also have a heart for the people so that's the that's the people friendliness and yeah you know i mean i personally have personally speaking i have solar panels on my roof and i did that several years before i even put it into into the drive-in so i knew about the panels and they worked fine for me and 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 i knew you know what they could do as far as cutting energy down and then that naturally led to me uh, looking into electric cars and and uh, you know of course people say the batteries you know c contribute and all but you know if you can if you can if you can eliminate that carbon output you know um, if you can eliminate using those kinds of energy sources um, gasoline and petroleum and it's not for everybody again mm -hmm. I don't I'm not militant to propose that everybody get an electric car everybody did you know do it with fossil fuels but if everybody did what they could and within their means um, then again you know we, we we would go a long ways to becoming sustainable energy wise and and otherwise yeah Thank you so much. That was a great final conclusion because we're at the end of the show. Thank you so much, Jim, for having been here. Thank you for being such an informed citizen, self-trained, uh, informed client, and I insist to say architect. <laughs> and uh, I know you inspire Thanks. a lot of students of mine, and I think this is very promising that the, the most uh, innovative architecture comes from citizens, so it's kind of a grassroots kind of movement and so please keep that up I know you will and um, I, I hope we see you again here because uh, we've talked a little bit you're trying to move on and, and yeah. go a little bit more in, in directions of, of people and friendliness so Absolutely. With that, thank you very much well, thank you for having us thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it Thanks. I hope to see you back next week on Tuesday early evening for human humane architecture